Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to news values. News values is something you need to be aware of at A level and sometimes GCSE teachers may teach this to you as well and particularly if you are studying newspapers. So um, the news values theory was um, has de been developed over time but in particular the two people responsible for this theory are Galtung and Rouge. Um, don't ask me if that's the right way of pronouncing them, I've no idea. Um, but I'm going to go through this theory and try and explain uh, what it's all about. So the idea of news values basically just means how we can tell which stories might be given more space, more time, more priority in a newspaper. So which ones might you put on your front cover? Which stories might you choose to include and which stories might you choose not to bother reporting on? And that's what Gal Tung and Rouge were trying to explain when they came up with this theory. And they looked at a lot of news stories and they came up with uh, a list of points that they thought if the news story had these things, it would be seen as more relevant, more important, and would therefore potentially be given more space and more time in terms of a newspaper. So I'm going to go through each of their ideas and it might be worth having a look at news articles or newspaper front covers that you are studying for either GCC or A-level and seeing does this story have those elements or not? And if it does, that might explain why it's being given more prominence in a newspaper. So one of the first things they say is that a story that has negative elements is always considered better for a newspaper. Don't forget, newspapers are there to sell papers. They want people to pick it up. And people generally don't want to read positive news stories. We're actually quite kind of gluttons for punishment and we really like the negative stuff. So if something really bad has happened, then it's going to be given much more prominence and size and space in a newspaper than if something particularly good has happened. The next thing that they looked at was that stories that had what they call proximity were given more space and importance. What that means is if the newspaper article is about uh, an event that happened close geographically to their target audience, so, for example, um, in Britain, we are much more likely to want to read uh, news stories that have happened in the UK, potentially in the US, because we feel kind of quite close to America in terms of uh, maybe culture and values. Whereas newspaper stories, news events, cultural affairs, politics that have happened in far flung places of the world are often not reported on at all, even if they're quite big news stories. The next element is, does the story have recency? Did it just happen? Is it breaking news? The more immediate it is, the more recent the event, the more likely it is that the newspaper are going to want to report on it, particularly if it's just happened like right now, because, um, you know, a lot of audiences will want to search out for a newspaper or an online news website, which offers something that is very, very up to date. By contrast, though, there is also something they called currency. And that means that um, if a newspaper story or a, an event has been going for a long time, it's ongoing and it's going to be in the news for a while anyway, um, that might be given more space because the audience will be familiar with it. So, for example, um, I don't know, reporting on Brexit and all the issues that have happened surrounding that is a very long ongoing story. Um, and so sometimes newspapers might be more willing to report on something that has been going on for a while because they know that an audience is already uh, going to be familiar with that event. Very similarly is the idea of continuity and that is if an event happens that they know will go on for a long time. So if something happened tomorrow, um, for example, like a terrorist attack, um, they know that that story will give them lots of stories that they can write about over the oncoming weeks. They will be able to interview victims. They'll be able to talk to police officers. There might be a trial, you know, so there'll be lots of things that they can use out of that story, which sounds very pessimistic, but unfortunately that's what newspapers are about. So if there is a story that happens, um, an event that happens that they think will give them lots of ideas for stories in the next few weeks, then that might be something they'd be more willing to give space to. Something audiences particularly like is uniqueness. If something is unusual, strange, and it doesn't happen very often, that's often quite a good sign that a newspaper might want to report on it. So, um, you know, a, a dog biting a man might not be particularly unusual. But if, for example, there was a story about a man biting a dog, <laughs> that might be seen as very strange, unusual, unique, and therefore a newspaper might be more willing to report on it.
So have a look and see if any of your newspaper articles are particularly strange or odd. If a story is very simple and easy to understand, newspapers will often give it a little bit more space. Audiences in general, we don't really understand complex issues. Mainstream audiences don't really understand complex politics or finance. And I'm talking about a general mainstream audience. And so, um, often newspapers will report on very simple stories. So if there's a really easy to understand story in your paper, it's probably been chosen because they're trying to engage their audiences who might be put off by more complex events. Something newspapers also really like is this idea of a personal interest, a human interest, a personal angle to a story. So if there is a story that perhaps might seem a little bit more complex, but they can make it about an individual person, that really helps to sell the story and make it more interesting. So if we're just talking about gas prices rising and people not being able to afford to heat their homes or to um, you know, cook their food over winter, um, it might not be considered a particularly interesting story. But if they can interview 95 year old Doris who looks very sad about the fact that she's not going to be able to afford to heat her home and she sat there with a kind of blanket on shivering that makes it a much more interesting story because we're hearing Doris's personal angle personal take on this a bit more kind of boring story so um, personal interest stories where they can kind of reach out to an individual and get a kind of more emotional take on something might be seen as more important for a newspaper also, audiences often do like things that match our expectations. So although we do like unusual or unique stories, sometimes we also like things that totally match what we thought was going to happen or um, confirm exactly what we believe in because we kind of like to feel like we were right and we knew it all along. So anything expected um, is always quite good for a newspaper. Um, so certain audiences um, will love every year to hear the stories about um, snow uh, coming and shutting down the country and there being six inches of snow everywhere and everyone's like oh I knew it was going to snow um, um, and, you know, so it's that idea of matching our expectations. Something that is probably very relevant to a lot of the newspaper covers and articles that you are studying is the idea of elite people. Now, that basically means celebrities or recognisable people. It doesn't have to be actors or singers. It could be politicians, you know, people in positions of power in the country, somebody that you, the audience might recognise. Any story that involves a celebrity or an important person is going to be considered more important than a story involving a normal person. Um, and that is because we just generally are more interested in the lives of celebrity people or famous people. So it, have a look at your newspaper articles. Do they contain any celebrities? And that is going to engage an audience. If a newspaper has got a story that has a famous person in it, they're probably going to give it more space and attention. Is the story that you are looking at exclusive? Is it a story that only that newspaper has managed to report on and none of the other newspapers? Sometimes they will say exclusive inside the Daily Mirror or something along those lines. And it means that they're the only ones who managed to scoop that story. If they know that they are the only ones that have managed to get hold of this story, then they're more likely to report it. And that's because it makes their newspaper stand out amongst their competition. And newspapers love to do this because if they can stand out and be the only one to scoop a story, particularly a very important story, then um, audiences will be more likely to buy their paper. And it makes them seem like a really quality or successful paper as well. And the last idea that is part of this theory is the idea of size. How many people did the story affect? So if there was an explosion tomorrow and two people were injured uh, and there was an explosion in another part of the country and 400 people were injured, the newspaper is far more likely to, to report on the story that affects the larger number of people. Um, and that is just simply because the more people it affects, the more people are likely to want to read about the story. So that's a very simple summary of Gal Tung and Rouge's idea of news values. You don't necessarily need to remember their names for A-level uh, a or GCSE, but just have bearing in mind um, the kind of choices about what that newspaper has chosen to put on their front cover or on their article pages. Are you able to link that to any of those news values? Can you understand why some of those stories may have been valued more and given more space and more prominence than perhaps other stories in the paper? Does it explain why some stories are very, very small and in the corner or at the side and one story is giant and splashed all over the front cover?
Okay, so that's my easy to understand guide to news values. Please don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe for lots of other um, relevant videos for both GCC and A-level, including theories, set texts and keywords.